the parallel programming library. It's a new library that is part of XC6 for Object Pascal and C++ and for all platforms, Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. The goal is multiple on one side, make it easier to write multi-threaded applications and so take advantage of multi-core CPUs and also boost the performance of the, re of the existing apps in this way, but it doubles as a way to make it easier to write asynchronous operations and work in terms of task, which is a much more abstract concept than an actual physical system thread, because tasks can be assigned to thread by the engine uh, in a very flexible and sophisticated way using thread pooling, using a self-tuning uh, architecture. So rather than showing the big old graphical demo that ships as part of the product, which is actually quite fun, uh, what I want to go to instead is to just give you some small glimpses of code for a parallel for loop, task scheduling, and futures, which are some of the technologies that are part of the library. So let me get back here and reopen my parallel for demo. This is a mobile application, of course, the same will work on the desktop. And it has a for loop that just goes through a number of elements is 50k, the first 50,000 numbers and checks the prime numbers and shows the result. And of course, also how much time it took. By comparison of this for loop, you can see this parallel for loop. The same code is written within an anonymous method and is passed as parameter to this T parallel for. For C++, it's a, a method is a closure rather than, or C++ closure or method pointer rather than an anonymous method. If I run this code again on my phone, you'll be able to see how much time it takes to run the loop. This traditional for loop is 3.7 seconds and the parallel version, which is significantly faster, about one third faster on this quad core um, Nexus phone. So if you have an algorithm, you have to really speed up. Uh, that makes a lot of sense when possible to parallelize it and take advantage of the cores, not only not just not only on the desktop, but even on on mobiles. Almost all mobile phones are at least dual cores these days, and there are um, eight cores devices that are starting to appear on the market. Of course, there is a drawback: battery consumption. And, and heat for the phone. So you have to use this with some care, but the ability to take advantage of the power of the phone uh, is certainly significant. Now, let me get out of the phone and back to the code. And I want to show you a couple of further code snippets focused on uh, other features like task. A task is an abstraction uh, of an operation that you want to run on threads, but again, association of tasks and, and threads is done by the library, and you can reason at a much higher level in terms of, of task. And again, this code runs throughout all platforms. In this case, the task is absolutely uh, nonsense. Just wait some time and do something. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's very visual, very visible, although that's not code I suggest you to write. So I can press my button and wait a little and you get the message after three seconds. Now things start getting interesting when you create multiple tasks, uh, an array of tasks, and you can uh, wait for any, wait for all, or wait for some of them that you put in a different array and do a bunch of different operations with the task. 
whether this will be actually executed in parallel or in sequence, it's mostly up to the library, and you shouldn't really bother too much about the implementation unless you really need to push performance to the extreme. So again, I have this application running, wait for all, all tasks are being executed, probably in parallel at this time, and then we'll get our result. Some syntax sugar for the futures. A future is just a promise to get a value, to make a value available. And of course, you need to always provide the value of that future, which can be any data type. In this case, the future is a future of an integer. You need to provide a task that has to be based on a function that returns a compatible uh, information. And then what you can do besides checking the status of the task is at one point ask for the value of the future. And if it hasn't been calculated so far, um, it will be calculated at that time waiting for the task to be completed. So this is our future operation. Again, you see it's waiting, is waiting, and then it tells us that the calculation is finished. 